Oh, so you think you just get to drive all the cars all the time? Oh yeah, this one's pretty cool. You like this one, huh? I, I do like this. You, I've, it's a lot like the 01 Jaguar XJR we used to have. Uh, that was a four-door, this one's a two-door, but this is really sweet. Let's take a look at this 95 XJS. Let's get started. Welcome back guys, and yes, this is a beautiful XJS V12. Like I said, it's a 1995, and it is in pretty good shape. It's not in showroom Concours d'Elegance condition, but it is in very good shape for its age. We're gonna take a look around this, go over the list of everything the customer has as complaints, and we'll take a look under the hood of this beautiful V12 engine. So you guys have seen in previous videos a blue Maserati Coupe, a silver 997 4S. This is the same customer. He has brought us this beautiful XJS. And he's a wonderful customer. He's another one of my favorite customers that says, here's the keys. I don't, don't call me about the cost. Just fix it. Get it done and call me when it's done. I love doing the work for those customers. So let's take a look around this car. One of the first things I noticed is that the emblems were gold at one time, but the gold plating is kind of worn off weathered off, I guess you could say. It's kind of odd that it has the old emblem from the old days mixed with the new leaping Jaguar that you see on the more modern Jags. It's kind of a mixture of the two. So as you can see, these headlights are not like the light blue one that we had in here not too long ago with the glass round mandated US style headlights. These are the composite updated headlights and they look really good on this car. I would rather have these style headlights than the round glass ones. That's just my preference. We'll go ahead and move around this side of the car see if there's anything going on with the paint or and it doesn't look like there's too much going on with dents or rust or anything like that got nice michelin tires the wheels are in good shape i do see a small scratch as we move to the door right here a little gouge in the paint like i said it's not showroom quality but it is in very good shape here at the back quarter, we can see that it's not also not been dented or dinged up or beat up or anything. There's no rust along the wheel arches. The wheels look good. The tires are good. And we move around to the back. It's got a really nice Jag style rear end. It's got dual exhaust. It has a nice rear spoiler that wasn't on the light blue Jag that we saw earlier. It kind of spruces it up and makes it look more sporty. There is a small dent here. As you can see, as Miss Wizard walks by in the, in the light, you can see it. The convertible top is in really good shape. It's not ripped or torn. It's a little dirty, but it's not damaged. That's the good thing. And on this door, I really don't see any blemishes. Nothing serious going on there. And on the front right fender, everything looks good as well. It is in really pretty good shape. The customer drove it up here and picked up his silver Porsche. So I know it must run and drive fine because he drove it all the way up here. Let's go ahead and open the hood and look underneath there. And here we have a beautiful six liter Jaguar V12. This is the identical engine that is going into my Malibu swap right over there. The 6 liter V12. It even has the same red oil cap, same AC compressor, but mine happens to have a serpentine belt set up. This one has conventional V belts, but it is the same as far as horsepower and all the upgrades and things that this engine has. This engine puts out 301 horsepower and 351 pound feet of torque. It's really pretty good power. It'd be similar to an LT1. It's really good power. It's not like wow power like a modern car, but for the day it was it was really pretty good. This one does not have the trash Lucas ignition system on it. This one has Magneti Morelli. Whether that's much better or not, I'm not too sure. But this one's a little bit more complex. It is computer controlled and there's twin ignition coils and a lot more things going on. I'm not going to be taking this apart on this car this time around, so I'm not going to show you all the stuff underneath there. There's no reason to take it all apart, but it looks fairly clean under the hood though. It looks really good. There was about 18,000 of these made during the 1995 year. So that's a pretty large number, but 
it's really not a whole lot of cars. These cars by now, especially with the interior, a lot of them are just trash. They're worn out. This one seems to be in really good shape. So that's what we're seeing up here on the top of the engine. Let's take a look at the interior. This particular model has 51,000 miles approximately on it, which is very low for a car of this age. And it shows in the interior, the dash is not cracked at all. The wood is not cracked, it's in good shape. There is some scuffing on the gear shifter from just wear, from usage, but that's to be expected on this car. The center console looks good. The seats do have some minor cracking going on, but that's just with aged leather. I really, I wouldn't do anything with that. I would just condition it and leave it alone. Let's move this forward. Look at those little tiny seats. There is no leg room. It's not like there's small leg room. There is no leg room. Watch. Not even a baby can fit their legs there. I guess it's just for insurance reasons is why they put four seats just to say, oh yeah, it's a four-seater, when it really it's not. I don't know of anyone that could sit right there. Even as thin as Hoovy is, he would not fit there. It would squish his knees. The headliner, I guess you could say the convertible top, is in very good shape. The glass in the back is not broken, and the parcel shelf in the back is also in good shape. Even with just opening the door here a little bit ago, there's some really cool features on these older Jags. There's lots of solid steel parts, like the seatbelt piece here. This is not plastic, but like on a 2015 Jag. This is metal. This seal plate here is solid steel. Very heavy. And even on the door handles on the exterior, when I lifted it to open the door, you could feel it's, it's steel. It's not cheap plastic. So many newer cars anymore you hear about, yeah, my door handle broke off. Why are they not using metal? I don't know, but maybe because of cost. That's probably why, but I really like the features of this car that are very heavy duty, very quality. So let's take a look at what's wrong with this car. Why is it here? So the customer dropped this car off with a list of things to look at. One of the things he's concerned about is when he's going down the road, it drives straight, it drives correctly, but yet the steering wheel is crooked. He doesn't know why or... I think he just bought this car not too long ago, but he's curious as to why is the steering wheel crooked, but yet this, the steering itself is fine. So we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. He wants to check all the fluids, make sure they're all topped off and clean. And if they need to be replaced, go ahead and do so. The parking brake light that's on the dash is always on, no matter if the parking brake is down or up, it doesn't matter. He wants that checked out. He thinks that the parking brake also doesn't do a whole lot. He says that he can get the car rolling just very slowly and pull up on the e-brake or the parking brake. Nothing happens. It really doesn't do much. So he'd like that checked out. He'd like to check that the AC is working, make sure it's all operational because spring is around the corner. The third brake light on the spoiler that we just looked at, he says it is inoperable. He says there is a light on the dash that says check engine. He wants to see if that's a check engine light or it actually says the words check engine. He wants to see what that's all about. Check for leaks and also when the engine warms up there is kind of a high idle that if you goose the gas pedal the idle comes back down to where it's supposed to be. It could be a sticking throttle linkage or something. So those are the things that the customer is concerned about. In addition to those things, when Mrs. Wizard was driving up just now, she thought the brakes felt really soft and she could feel like a grinding and they felt like they weren't doing a whole lot. So let's definitely take a look at the brakes as soon as we get it on the lift. And let's do that now. Let's get it up in the air and take a look. So as you can tell from the list that I just went over, there's nothing majorly wrong with this car, but there's a lot of little things he'd like sorted out so that he'll have the thing ready to cruise this summer. You can put the top down and enjoy this car without worrying about 
oh, this isn't working right or that isn't working right. So that's why it's here. Let's go ahead and start right here. I can see some scrapes going on. Somebody's hit a few parking stall, maybe a curb or something. Some simple scrapes though. I see some leakage. It's coming from way up in there. It's engine oil. It's not coolant or anything. Our water pump is right there, but that's that's not what's leaking there. Looks like possibly valve cover gaskets are leaking on this one. They're seeping a little bit. Other than that, I don't see much anything else. Here's our radiator with one big fan and one small fan. One fan is ran by a belt. The large fan is with a thermal clutch. And the small fan is an auxiliary fan for air conditioning or if it gets really hot, that turns on. The brakes are nice and thick here. It's got nice new Bilstein shocks on it. Nothing really all that bad there. It's got fairly new brake hoses on it. It's been replaced at some point recent. Look at the steering rack as we move across to the other wheel. I don't see anything leaking out of it. Nice new brake pads there. No leaks on the nice new shock. I can tell that this has been apart before because this. Put that back on. Those are little telltale signs. You can see that somebody's been in there, had it apart. Nothing loose. Thing looks good there. Here's our big, huge oil pan for the engine. There's a little bit of seepage going on again. I think it's valve cover gaskets up top. All this is coming from up above. If you look on the sides of the block, it's wet even up there. So coming from up above, it could be an oil pressure sending unit or something. We'll take a look deeper into that. But we do see that there's some seepage going on. Here's our big 4L80E transmission, just like the one that's going in the Malibu. A GM transmission in an English Jaguar. There's our transmission mount. Looks to be in good shape. Usually this orange foam here is disintegrated by now, but that one is in good shape. There's our exhaust. And there's our drive shaft. Not a whole lot of play. It seems like to be in good shape. There's our beefy differential. Big differential. Luckily, this is a new enough car that the brakes aren't right here at the differential like on the older Jags. It's out here at the wheel. So let's go ahead and check those out. Looks like brand new pads as well there. Someone recently just did a brake job on this. They did new hoses and new pads. Let's move on over to the other side. Nice new pads, twin Bilsteins. Nothing loose, nothing leaking there. Try out our half shaft, nothing loose there. So here's our e-brake cable. He was mentioning that it doesn't work. And it goes up to here to this. There's an arm here and also an arm on the left. There may be just way out of adjustment. We'll check that out and see what's going on there. But from those two arms, it goes to either wheel to actually actuate the parking brake. Here we have little drains. This is for the trunk area. If water were to get into the trunk, it won't sit in there. It'll actually drain out. They look like little snorkels. You remember the cartoon, the snorks, Mrs. Wizard? Oh yeah. Those look like the top of their heads. <laughs> There's our twin exhaust out the back. So we found a few issues to look at as far as some leaks and some issues. I didn't see anything with the brakes that would be grinding or anything or their brand new pads and everything all the way around. We'll have to check a little deeper and see what's going on. Actually do a road test. But I don't see anything majorly wrong with this and that doesn't surprise me because it's only got 51,000 miles on it. Let's go ahead and lower this thing down. I want to pop the hood just real quick to look at something. You can go ahead and set that up. So 
So before we wrap it up, I actually see where Mrs. Wizard found an oil leak, the valve cover gaskets. It's all gunky in there. So it's kind of leaking pretty good down the sides of the block. And also Mrs. Wizard mentioned that the brakes, not maybe necessarily were grinding, but just felt really sluggish, like they weren't doing the job. This will be something I check into on this. This is the power brakes here. There's an electric motor that builds up pressure to this accumulator, and that is your power brakes. It doesn't have a vacuum booster or hydro boost. This is a totally different system. Could be that the sensor's bad, not telling the pump to turn on, and therefore you don't have power brakes. Could be the motor is bad. So we'll take a look at that and see what we find out on that. But that's definitely where I'm going to start looking for the brake issue. So one thing to keep in mind, especially on these Euro Jags, is that inside of this hood strut is got a catch that actually holds the hood. So if the struts fail, at least it'll still hold it up. And the wrong thing to do right now would be to just go and slam the hood because you would probably bend the hood or break the, the hood strut or do something bad would happen. You have to lift up to undo the catch, then back down again. We go to the other side. There we go. So thanks for following along on this really sweet car. We've got quite a list of things to look at, although nothing seems majorly wrong or huge issues. It's all a bunch of small things, which is really good, but it still can tally up the bill really fast when you've got a list of things. If you're curious what kind of tools that we're going to use to fix this Jag, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. All the tools we use in the shop are listed there for sale and we get a small cut. If you guys haven't checked out Crazy D's equipment, like I'm wearing the shirt today, he's the guy in the office that actually does all the sales and phone calls and things. He also does agricultural stuff on the side. Any of you that have seen previous videos where we have farm equipment on the side of the building, that's what he does. He sells that stuff and he actually has his own YouTube channel. We'll include a link in the description below as well to Crazy D's equipment. If you're into farm stuff, old farm machinery and things of that nature, that's what he does. And you guys want to check that out. And don't forget to subscribe to The Car Wizard. Hit the subscribe button now because we've got many cool projects to come. Thanks for watching.